everyone. Welcome to Not By Bread Alone, our together pilgrimage on our way to Easter. I am a couple of days behind, but I will fill you in. And I don't want to be the ones who stops you from your journey. But anyway, the spirit will unfold what you need. This is what I very strong believe. And this is your pastor, Yeti. Today I'm going to talk about new math. And our readings are from Jeremiah 17, 5 to 10, Luke 16, 19 to 31. Scripture. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Luke 16, 31. Our reflection. I tend to lean toward the skeptical. I want to be persuaded of things. Two plus two had better equal four when I add it all up. Or I'm not buying whatever it is you're selling. I think it's the newspaper reporter in me. At least... That was my desire, but I am not. So when I read today's gospel, I felt a little discomfort. As I shifted in my chair and focused on Abraham telling the rich man he had already received what was good during his lifetime. I could not help but notice all the creature comforts that surround me. A full fridge, a warm house, plenty of everything. Fast forward to the end of the story when the rich man begs Abraham to send a messenger to warn his brothers that they need to shape up and fast. Abraham says what we all know to be just as true today as it was then. We don't put a lot of credence in things or people that go against life as we know, as we know it or suggest we change radically. If we had to put ourselves back into Jesus' world, would we have been willing to do what he said must be done to reach eternal life, even if it went against everything? We believed up to that point? Are we willing to do that today? The optimist in me says, yes, I am. But the skeptic in me knows better, because what Jesus asks is not easy. I am willing to accept that sometimes, according to Jesus' plan, 2 plus 2 equals 3. Meditation. If we focus only on the story of the rich man and Lazarus, it will be easy to get discouraged. Does a good life now preclude us from a good life later? The first reading from Jeremiah gives us a clue. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. Jeremiah 17 verse 7. It's not the physical stuff that keeps us from heaven, but rather our insistence on thinking we need that stuff to be happy more than we need God. 
if everything was gone tomorrow, could we still find joy in the Lord? If God tests our hearts, how will we respond? Pray with me. God of abundance, we are grateful for our many blessings. Let us be generous toward those who are not so fortunate. Let us too remember that with or without material wealth, we are rich in faith, hope, and love. And help us to remind us that every day. In Jesus' name, amen. As we walk our way in our Lenten season, I think a lot comes our way. And sometimes it smashes us before our eyes. Or we notice it later. Sometimes we don't get it. This is how humans are put together, right? So, with the love that I have in my heart for Jesus, life is asking something from us to be awake, to have that awareness as we walk step by step. And let this Lenten season remind us what we need to do. Reminders are not currently supported on this day. So, may God bless you and help you to focus on your daily business, your daily spiritual walk with Christ. And may the Holy Spirit guide you. God bless. Bye.